My name is Dotun Pukwola and this is my beautiful story. I turn trash to treasures, rubbish to rubies and waste to wealth with a view to affecting my generation and make my nation great. A collection of sculptures and installations is what contemporary artist Dr. Pupola is presenting at the Signature Gallery. 49, 31, 49. <laughs> At the age of nine, my parents discovered that uh, I had passion for creative works and, you know, they, they invested their time and energy to helping me to bring that potential to fulfillment, you know. Like I said, my mom is the bone behind my growth and development in creative works. You know, they discovered that I was passionate, I was very creative. At a very tender age, I could remember an experience where our landlord just bought a white Mercedes Benz and I picked a sharp object to create designs on his brand new Mercedes Benz. And this has put me into several trouble, you know. I, as a child, you just want to, I just want to explore, I just want to express myself, you know, rolling tires on the street, creating all sort of uh, creative works from childhood. So when my parents saw that I was passionate about doing creative things, so my mom took me to a roadside artist around Agege in Lagos, where I went to learn how to paint, how to draw and sculpt. So that was how the, the whole uh, creative journey started. So when I left the, the training, I went to Aochi Polytechnic to do uh, fine and applied art, which uh, I, I was fortunate and with my creative works finished as the best student. Then I proceed to Obafemi Aulo University to study fine and applied art and uh, I did my master's degree there. So the journey has been like uh, 30, I mean like 31 years journey of creativity. In 2014, I was so tired and I was tired of what I was doing. And I was not satisfied with what I had learned after my master's degree. So I, I, I went online to search for a mentor so I met a man called John Lopez. He's, he's a cowboy, he's, he's a rancher. So and I told him I wanted to learn how to weld. So he invited me over to the United States. And, you know, I took the journey from Nigeria to the US and I went to learn how to weld from him. That was where, I, you know, I was groomed on the art of hybrid sculptures. Now, I was groomed for, during my residency training, how to use the MIG welding. I learned how to use plasma cutting, MIG welding, TIG welding, and all sort of sophisticated uh, equipment in the US. So I came back to Nigeria and I started picking scraps from different scrap yards. So, you know, that was one of the experiences in my life that I will never forget. It's, it was a turning point of my career because between the year 2000 and 2014, it was all very rough, tough time, struggling, ass kissing and hustling on the street and picking different, you know, dirty rags and dirty linen and doing all sorts of things. But that was a turning point to the, the new series of works that you see me doing here. And these works, I started this series about three years ago precisely and I can tell you it, is, it has been a wonderful experience to rediscover myself in 2014. Until now, I'm still in the search for more knowledge. I get my inspirations from nature and this nation, Nigeria. 
This country is blessed with uh, natural resources, animals, and different things here inspires me. Our folk tales, our folklores, our stories, our culture. So all these things inspires me to create my works. This is Owiwi. You know, these are a, a big owl. You know, there are a lot of stories, folk tales that is attached to all this. So these things, they, they naturally just come on me and I try my best to document my my inspiration. So the nation and nature inspires me to create most of my works. My metal work serves as a metaphor for mental health. Now most of the people when they see my work uh, it makes them happy. It makes them break out of their depression, their, their, their shackles. That's number one. Number two, my body of works have been used to, to solve the environmental decadence and uh, uh, basically picking off scraps from the scrap yard. In a way, it's, it's my own contribution to the ecosystem cleaning up the environment and picking up scraps from the road, you know, picking up scraps from the waterways. I mean, these are things that I do to save the environment. I have been picking scraps from different workshops, from Lagos to Abuja to Benin to Qatar to almost everywhere, picked even to the US. So I go to pick scraps on the street pick in a scrap yard and turn them to magnificent sculptures that, you know, whenever people see them, there's this joy, there's this, uh, there's this, uh, you know, happiness that just comes, you know, to them. Uh, if you look at that, it's also like uh, giving life to dead materials. And symbolically, that means, uh, out of your broken pieces and out of your, uh, uh, you know, discarded life, you can actually pick your pieces back and get something good from your life. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very deep meaning. My works are dead scraps that I transform from rubbish to rubies, from waste to wealth and from trash to treasure. So if you look at this, if our, com our, our community, our environment is full of, you know, trash and different things. So my work talks to people, you know, encourage people to bring out their best in them. It's been a very tough experience to, to move from that point to this point. You know, uh, I remember a very wonderful experience that I was, supposed to go for a residency in the United States and you know I slept at the garage just to move from one state to another. Same with different experiences here in Nigeria. I had to you know beg somebody to buy my work just to get money to feed. You know I've done all sort of works that you probably would do the artwork on credit. Some you would use it to beg some celebrities just to to get money to, to feed yourself or to buy clothes or to buy materials. So these are ups and downs that uh, almost every artist you know, in Nigeria, these are some of the things they face. And I wouldn't say mine is exceptional, but uh, the story is changing gradually. Initially when I started my art, it was art for passion but now it's my profession it needs to pay my bills so I go for exhibitions I do workshops I do symposiums I put my works in different auction houses and that's how I get fund for my work I mean for now I'm, I could be fully booked for the whole year you know so getting the finance now is not a big deal because the works are classified as luxury pieces so 
only meant for people that are well fed. It's only people that are well fed that can, you know, buy this work now. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I want my life to be a Bible that people will read every time. In decades, they will still pick it to read. I want to be an encyclopedia of creative uh, information, knowledge, you know. I want to be a source of inspiration to the coming generations. I want people to see my work, to see me and have hope. So that's what I aspire to be. I don't want to be a celebrity, but I just want to be a legend in this, in this industry. Some people think that when you say you are a metal sculptor, you probably will be worshipping Ogun or Oya or you have one deity that you have to put red oil on. I mean, my forefathers have done that. My grandfather, my great-grandfather, they were blacksmith, gun maker, hunters. So they have worshipped Ogun and all sorts. And we have the Christian religion. So my strength is in God. Are you recording that too? <laughs> yeah, you know, my strength is in 